Welcome to Presence Practice with Poonam and Parker. Hello, Poonam. Hi, Parker. So today's topic uh, was a request that we discuss dealing with other people's unconscious behaviors, words, and actions. So because it's a broad question, we'll answer it broadly because this is a topic that we could talk about for hours, I'm sure. It all comes down to separation in our state of consciousness in the end. So if we're uh, escaping our own unconscious patterns and we become more and more uh, living in the horizontal dimension, uh, less consciousness. And so uh, when there's less consciousness, we really start to see it in other people. So real change doesn't happen when the people outside of us change, or even if we pick this body up with the same set of consciousness and move it to a new house because we can't live with these people anymore. Uh, we, if we will recreate the same or similar circumstances in a matter of time in my experience. So uh, change happens not by escaping, but being here as we are. Are you confused? So what is this clouds going by, a cloud of confusion, a cloud of happiness, a cloud of joy, uncertainty, irritation? Are we allowing that in ourselves in a gentle and loving, natural expression? Are we trying to console ourselves? We watch another talk or read another spiritual text so we can console ourselves? Or are we deeply accepting and not looking away from what is here in the present moment? So when someone comes to you and they're manipulating, complaining, or they're displaying any unconscious behavior that because you've begun exploring your own, it's very easy to see it in the world. It's another step that we naturally offer the situation in the person. Com total compassion. It cannot be other than how it is. We leave, leave them alone. Leave their unconsciousness alone. We can say it a clean and clear no. Because there's, and you know it's a clean and clear no because there's not a story. We're not adding a story to the situation or finding an excuse for why we should forgive it. We just offer it. We offer that it has a feeling and an unconsciousness has a, a certain density to it and we can offer our clarity and our spaciousness to any person or situation oftentimes you see that they just lay it aside whenever their complaint was or pattern was that was playing out You know, judging other people's consciousness, unconsciousness or consciousness or sizing up anyone and not leaving them alone, is a, it's a separation. It takes you out of being fused with wholeness. It makes them the other. We are created in ourselves, make the ego the other rather than giving it a nice, warm, welcoming hug and seeing what it has to teach us. I don't want to learn anymore. I don't want to do it anymore. Well, that's what we're doing. <laughs> we're here and this is what we're doing. One of the most loving things that we can do is to allow that, to, to give ourselves 
that full acceptance. And then naturally, we're not having a chewing mind conversation about how we need to do it or we should do something. There's, it, that's still separation. <laughs> we, we, we move fully into accepting everything and everyone exactly as they are. And then you may take action, but it's from a deeper space. Much You just start moving, and that's what you do next. Now, Eckhart says, and I know we've repeated it in these videos and in the day-to-day -day, uh, activities of working with people and yoga and meditation, is we have three choices in any situation. And I'm paraphrasing here. So we can uh, change the situation, leave the situation, accept the situation. In any of those cases, acceptance, need, that comes first. So it's not really, well, I'll pick this one and go do this one. So let's, let me look at this again. We're doing our best these days to stay on topic. Dealing with people's unconscious behavior, words, and actions. Oh, here's another one, words. So in the world of form, as Eckhart says, we're always superior to some and inferior to others. On the horizontal dimension, we're always going to meet people that and it does, none of that matters. <laughs> it doesn't, none of it matters in the end. So if, if somebody says something to you that's meant to diminish you in some way, levity, some levity, leave, leave them alone, right? If they want to, don't, no course correction there. Let people have their opinions of you and themselves and the world and their work and you know, it's like this compulsive neurosis of being completely uh, self-involved when you're fully unconscious. And if you're in front of someone that's in this place, of course that's going to come up, you know, to, to, to use words to maybe try to manipulate or hurt or diminish, diminish you in some way. Go with it. Okay, you may be right. Or not to say nothing at all. Sometimes I say nothing at all. I just sit. And then move on to something else. There's something about uh, deep unconsciousness. It's very, uh, it's, it, it was immaturity. Like it has a feeling of immaturity, like a, ch like a child that doesn't know. They don't know. They don't know. So you, absolute insanity to enter that uh, vortex, right? We need to just leave it alone and with their behavior and actions. So I'd have to have a specific question to answer anything more than this broad stroke of working with unconsciousness and others. But the biggest tip that I, two biggest tips that I, to sum this up, is, uh, and I know that Poonam's got some words on, on this as well. She works in a corporate environment. Uh, so two things. One is, is to deliver yourself from your own self-angst and self-judgment, and you'll overlook. Things will pass right through you like a sieve. It's not that you say, oh, I'm not going to uh, respond to this person. They're still resistance in that feel that for a second there's still resistance in it so if we fill ourselves up with plenty of uh, compassion and accepting at things are exactly as they are we don't need to get ahead of ourselves or sink into the past stay in the present moment there's nothing wrong and there's nothing wrong with what they're uh, doing and the second thing is don't take it too personally. Have some levity around things. You don't need to turn around anybody else's um, situation or, or 
position or consciousness you can you can experience it not lose any of your energy moving into the next moment perfectly possible so uh, i'll stop uh, my part of this by saying uh, uh, gentle as we go gentle as we go and if you have any questions just put them in the comment section below Freenam. Um, what I, uh, what I would say is, um, I, I don't know if Eckhart has clearly said, I may have heard him say, we do need these unconscious people. The, they serve a purpose as well, because how are we going to know how deeply rooted in our beingness are we, if we don't have that challenge of an unconscious human being question us, right? Mm -hmm. So here comes an unconscious human being. Are we deeply rooted in our beingness to not res not have any kind of reactivity? Uh, one person, I think he's answered this question even during his regular Q&A on the website. But one person, even during School of Awakening, asked this question that he's not able to maintain his uh, reactivity, right? how much ever meditation he's done, he's not able to maintain his uh, reactivity. And Eckhart explained, and I've noticed that ab about myself, if you asked me uh, seven years back, I would have reacted, right? Then comes the first stages, you're already reacting when the unconscious person comes through. The second stage of we've done some presence practice, we know our beingness, then we'll, um, we'll react, but during the reaction, uh, during the frustration or the annoyance or the anger, we will know that we are reacting. Does that make sense? Uh, we've yeah. already observed yeah. ourselves reacting, right? Mm -hmm. Then the third stage, you, we went deeper and now we are uh, experiencing that whenever this type of unconsciousness occurs, that we tend to react right so the third stage is we will already like when we, reactivity arises within the ickiness started the starts or we are feeling like the blood pumping right wanting to that uh, like in the law of uh, um, karmic law of com compensatory right karmic law is compensatory he says like the um, karma like there's a pressure that builds up and we want to say something, right? Because this person is going to be reactive. Feel that pressure, feel the, we already feel the pressure and not react. The very last stage is no reactivity whatsoever, that we are so deeply rooted in our beingness that we are not even feed, I mean, we know the pressure is there, but there is no reaction. And then we can pull that person out of their unconsciousness. That that person will come in our presence and they'll start to be reactive. And um, instead of being reactive, they'll just, uh, something will happen and they'll quieten down. Like they'll come in our presence, want to be reactive, and they'll just see our beingness and they'll quieten down. Um, Kim Ming actually in the Q&A for November 2019, she has the story about being at Starbucks where there was a little girl uh, and her fatherly figure, somebody, and the girl was being upset and Kim just um, stayed in her presence and then she felt a surge of energy come through her and when she felt the surge of energy come through her, the, the girl burst into laughter. Instead of her anxiety and anger and whatever she was telling this older gentleman. Uh, so, you know, we, we can pull if we, are, we have enough of our rootedness. So it's just a measure of how rooted are we in our beingness right what stage of reactivity we have ourselves and we have to remember when somebody says uh words like calls his name or something the most beautiful thing i learned from eckhart is observe our ego because they've torn down our uh, torn down our ego right and 
then the ego wants to come back in self-repair and say a worse thing to the, uh, you call me so-and-so, I'm going to call you so-and-so, right? So that self-repair, notice the self-repair of the ego mm. that we don't really need to self-repair, allow the ego to be diminished. It's okay for them to call me names and whatever actions they have. It's okay. It's, it's not going to change my beingness. That's what I had. It's a, can tell us exactly where we're identified if that's what's happening. I love what you said about each person in every situation is like a gift. It's a gift. There's, you're, you have a view here and an experience here that won't be duplicated exactly the same way twice. Are we going to be, and it's really about how quiet we are on the inside. So if we're, someone's talking to us and we're in our mind half listening and then judging what we're hearing, then we have our own internal dialogue. And that is the magnetic attraction of energy. Uh, so if you're just quiet, quiet on the inside, as, don't want it to change, let them empty completely without feeling like you're doing them a favor. <laughs> or is it that it's that you want it to stop and, there, and it, I think anyone all of you that are able to listen to these conversations between Poonam and I and Eckhart you know all the other wonderful teachers out there uh, you have that stillness you have that ability you have that, you, you've already been stretched. And so I, everyone uh, becomes more gentle and that gentleness pours out as generosity into the world. 